a pastor for 30 years in Nazarene denomination. I have taught my children, baptized my children, hundreds of people, and I've taught them all about hell. I'd like you to teach me how to reverse that. The fear of hell. They, the, my, my, my middle daughter said, Dad, aren't you afraid of going to hell? It is very striking that in the Hebrew Bible, there are very few references to hell, almost none. There are almost no references to what happens after you die. Now I say almost, because there are some exceptions. We are told in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14, that there's a place that a person goes after they die where their sins can be forgiven. It's the only passage that explicitly conveys this. So it's a temporary place. It obviously can't be a physical place because the body is in the grave. The bones are made out of material that just wait for the resurrection. That calcium makes sure that nothing can burn it. Never get cremated or honor the request of cremation because they grind bones down. Never do that. They won't tell you that. That's what they're doing. Okay, listen carefully. Now, the question is, why in Tanakh do we have so few... There are just like a handful of mentions of what happens after you die. So, yes, that once the body is buried, when your loved one is 120, very important to bury as soon as possible, and it's only after burial that the soul then ascends to heaven. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. I see so many people writing this down. Good. Okay. But the question is, why so little? And to make this question more pressing is that when we look at other holy books, we find the exact reverse. It's hell all over the place. <laughs> it was so far, didn't, I didn't mean the double entendre there. It's heaven and hell everywhere. So, and, and hell is a very, so there really is a very real thing of some spiritual separation from God that can cleanse a person or a person could destroy his eternity with God. That is possible. But it is, almost, it is never threatened in Tanakh, never. There's not a single place in the entire Hebrew Bible where there's a threat that if, if, you, if you don't uh, follow the way of God that you're gonna go to hell. It's mentioned only passingly, never in the course of a threat. And the question is why. So I think what I want to do again is to try to explore what's going on with the afterlife. So I want to play the game with you. And the game is called, If You Were God. Okay? If you were God. Okay? If you're God and you want, to, you want the people you have created to attach themselves to you and to live in a path that is just and right. So if you were God, if you're God, what would you th tell people are the consequences for bad behavior? Would you tell people that when you die, you're gonna go to hell if you sin against me? You're God, or you'll go to heaven if you're, you're God, no, why? Because once you die, it's too late to do anything about it. That's the dumbest thing in the world. If you're really God, that means you control the weather. So you're just saying, hey, hey this is the deal, okay? Here's what's gonna happen. If you turn against me, I call heaven and earth as witnesses. I'm getting the chills. Heaven and earth as witnesses, Deuteronomy 30. Why heaven and earth? This is, what is the, God became Shakespeare? Like, what is this? Heaven is a witness because the heavens could become closed, no rain. What then happens to the earth? No food. If you're God, you, could sh you can make it stop raining. That would be a very minor miracle to make it stop raining, in the, right? So if you're God, you would do exactly the kinds of things Tanakh warns us about. If you turn against me, I'm gonna exile you from the land of Israel. 70 years, Jeremiah 29, verse 10. You control history. 
Why would you play a game with people's head with heaven and hell, which, which is unfalsifiable, can't be tested? And one day I'm going to bring you home. And, and it's for this reason I think that Christians become so concerned when, when a loved one adopts, embraces the Jewish faith and they say, oh, you're going to go to hell. It's almost like, what kind of a religion is this? This is a transactional religion? That, that means if people stop dying, they, then, then Christianity would just close up. And, and is this like an exchange thing? So what we would expect from a book that is really from God is speaking in a way that only God could speak. And not use vague things like the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Like, what's that? <laughs> like, it's so vague that you can just fill it with anything, right? Always rumors of wars. There's probably one going to break out tonight. So what you would do is like really specific prophecy. You are going to return back to this land. And Jerusalem is going to be liberated. And it's going to happen 2,300 years after the Persians are defeated by Alexander the Great. Not in those words, but Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. You mean, you, you'd, if you're God, you really can control the weather. And in Israel, the weather is really important because it only rains during the winter. Imagine that. That means in Israel, it basically only rains from say from October to after Passover, that's it. If you didn't get your rains during the winter, fall, winter, you're not eating. There's no Nile River. There's no steady, de steady dependable source. So heaven and hell is used by false religion. That is a, a red flag that tells you this is not a religion from God, but rather is very effectively tapping into man's greatest fear, and that's dying. There's been many studies on this. Most people cannot spend more than 20 seconds contemplating their own death. So when people think about their own death, not plan for it, but actually think of what it would be like to die, it's so traumatic for most people, they have to stop thinking about it and just say, change the topic in their head. It's too much. It's something that frightens people. So it would be really effective for God to be going, you're going to go to hell if you don't do this, and you go to heaven to do that. But you're God. So if we can be God, we would never do that. Like, what do you do? Like, you go to, to Home Depot, buy a big shovel, go to a cemetery, dig up Charlie and say, hey, buddy, <clears throat> how did it go? Too late. It's, 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 it's brilliant. It's very, very effective, as we can see. But it's not of God because it's, it's, un, it's an unfalsifiable claim, but exploits and weaponizes our worst fear. Yes, of course, there is ultimately justice. And there is a resurrection of death for those who are faithful. But that's never used as a threat. It's never used as a threat because God is trying to change your behavior. If you're God, you control the weather. You control if you get to have babies or not. So why would you do that? Why would you appeal to heaven and hell? That's always a sign that this is, this is a false religion. And, and that's why in Tanakh, in every place where heaven and hell is mentioned, it's very rare, it's never in the context of a threat. It's just very passingly made. Okay, so that's what I think the way it should be explained. Okay, so thank you for your question.